Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Colred, and today we are on episode four of my Raid Fundamentals series. Today we'll be handling speed and turn meter mechanics, and then we'll get into speed tuning towards the end. So if you haven't checked out my first three videos in the series, you should definitely go and check those out, especially if you're new to Raid or an intermediate player, maybe you've only been in the game a few months. Uh, the first one was about the Bastion, the base, all the buildings, all the buttons there. Um, the second one was about the champions, the basics of champions, how to get champions, uh, different ways to strengthen your cha champions or customize your champions. The third one was about champion roles and the beginnings of team composition and how to build a good balanced team. And now we're going to continue with that idea and take it one step further where we get into speed and speed tuning and turn meter mechanics. Okay, so the turn meter is a controlling factor that you need to understand for every battle. It doesn't matter what battle you're in, but um, let's go ahead and actually jump into maybe a dungeon. That'll be easiest to see the turn meters. Uh, and we'll go to uh, uh, an early level dungeon. Let's go to level... Go to, uh, let's just do level 20. Okay. So this is my team. It doesn't matter what your team is. Turn meter works the same for everybody. And the reason I'm taking you in here is because this is where we have a lot of enemies. So you can see the yellow bar is the turn meter. Your team has the yellow bar. The enemies have the yellow bar and they are all at different levels. They may look really close. One of the difficulties is understanding, you know, visually how full is the turn meter and how much is it going to fill when a champion goes. But when you have no team, turn meter like this when you have zero and then you have the little green circle pulsing under your feet it's that champion's turn to go so what's going to happen is you can see that i have two champions three champions actually who have nearly full turn meter they will go in turn in order of their speed the enemies clearly don't have that much turn meter but after this champion goes that turn meter will begin to fill as will the turn meter of my fifth champion so let's go ahead and just do a non-attack here. And you'll see everybody's turn meter fills a little bit after that turn is over. You'll also notice that the champion that I just went with has a little bit of turn meter. So that champion goes and then everybody gets some turn meter. The next champion in line now has zero turn meter, right? It's completely empty because that has started her turn. So she would go and attack, let's say. And now you'll notice everybody's turn meter has changed a little bit. In this case, she actually got an extra turn, which is why her turn meter didn't fill. Sorry about that. I didn't think about that. So that's why turn meters didn't fill. She'll take her second turn. And now the turn meters of everybody will fill just a little bit, allies and enemies alike. You can see now it's the next champion's turn. And he's also going to get an extra turn. So turn meters will not fill. And... Now we clear the wave, we get to a new round, and the turn meters all reset based on speed. Okay, so everybody goes back to where they were at the beginning of round one, and this would happen with every round. You would reset a round, and the turn meter would start back refreshed from where it should be. Okay, uh, now when we get into the boss fight, it would be different because there are multiple rounds, but what you'll see is, um, you know, you can actually, depending on your speed, you can lap the enemy. If you're going fast enough, you can go twice or three times as frequently as they go. Um, and so that's the advantage of manipulating the turn meter and, and using speed. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop that battle. Now, in order to explain the turn meter mechanic a little bit more fully, I've made a diagram for you guys. <laughs> so nothing fancy here, but I want to just explain sort of what's going on in, in what we just saw in that combat that we just saw. So imagine that the enemies are the red circles and the green stars are your team. And they're just set up based on their speed. When you, when you load into the round, they are distributed based on their speed. Fastest champion goes first, second fastest champion goes second, so on and so forth, all the way down to the end. In this case, I'm doing, let's say, arena where it's a 4v4. I have my fastest champion who's first, then the enemy's fastest champion is second, and back and forth all the way down. Okay, however, Let's say my first champion is a turn meter filler. So Arbiter or Deacon Armstrong or High Katoon, who you get 30 days after login, these champions have skills where they fill the turn meter. If I fill the turn meter, let's say by 20%, all of these champions are going to move down 
the line 20 percent of their normal progress what they would do um you know basically based on their speed if their speed is faster they'll go further you know the turn meter will fill more for them but they'll get 20 percent of their turn meter progress so this person might jump this person might jump this might person might jump in line and so now what we've got a situation is this person just went and they go all the way back to the beginning but then they get their fill right just like everybody else does okay um and now the turn is over and everybody gets their natural progression when i say natural what i mean is any time a champion goes let's say there are no effects on the turn meter everybody takes a step forward in line so we have eight people in line the first person just completed their turn they go to the end of the line and then everybody steps forward that is the natural turn meter progression turn meter fill like a, a skill an ability that turn fills the turn meter by uh, a champion that is sort of an unnatural or, or an artificial filling of the turn meter so that's what our arbiter just did she just filled the turn meter of everybody and then once her turn was over everybody had an opportunity to take a step forward in line now what happens here is our number three champion our third fastest champion actually skip the line of our second fastest champion now let's say that champion also has a turn meter fill let's say this is let's say number one is arbiter and number three is deacon armstrong so deacon armstrong fills the turn meter and our all of our other champions progress and then deacon progresses and now everybody takes a step forward naturally again and as you can see what's happening is we have our fifth fastest champion has now hit the go line before the second fastest champion. Let's say they're just shy. So our third champion is going before their first champion is going, even though their first champion was a lot faster. Now, there are some additional mechanics here. So let's go ahead and sort of redistribute these. Let's imagine that we had a situation like say this so in fact ignore the numbers for a moment and just look at the position of the circle so right now what it looks like is our first champion is going to go and then their second champion is going to go but this is arbor who's got a turn meter fill and so she's going to use her turn meter fill and three and five let's say are going to hit the line and two is going to take a step forward now at the end of the turn everybody takes a step forward and now three fills the turn meter so three goes whoops three goes to the end that's deacon armstrong he fills the turn meter five ends up here seven ends up here and two now everybody walks forward let's say their normal progression and two hits the line all right well that's where this bonus turn meter begins to get into effect if you consider the go line 100%, right? It's just the 100% full turn meter. It's the natural turn meter you can't exceed just by stepping forward in line. It is the front of the line. However, if somebody behind you pushes you, you can actually get in front of the front of the line. That is where this bonus turn meter is. If you are in front of the front of the line, you will go first no matter how long or how many people are waiting at the front of the line. So if two and four and six and eight all hit that front of the line, they're all piled up and they're all waiting, but you've pushed five and seven into the bonus, even if they've come from behind, they now go first. Okay, so this is the advantage of turn meter uh, mechanics. If you can increase your turn meter, you can actually get into this bonus turn meter area where you're gonna get in front of the first person in line. If everybody hits the line at the same time or they just start packing up into the line, then you just go in order of speed again. So then it'd be two, then three, then four, then five. But in this case, we've crossed the line and five and seven are now into the bonus. And whoever is further into the bonus, which is going to be the person who's, who was closest to the go line, um, that person's going to go first and then the next person's going to go. Okay, so you can actually stall out the enemy here at the go line because they're not getting any turn meter increase and if you keep pushing turn meter you can actually get multiple turns and you can potentially go twice or three times 
Well, they're stuck at the front of the line. So the front of the line isn't really the best position to be in. It's just the natural position of walking forward. But here, we're not walking forward. We're being pushed from behind, right? Okay. Now, you'll notice there is a max line over here. There is actually a maximum turn meter fill that can happen. There are some champions like Cardinal. You can look her up in your index. Cardinal will revive champions at max turn meter. Maximum means you go next no matter what. So if I used, let's say, number five skills and I killed everybody here, I killed two, four, six. And, um, let's say I killed two, four, and six, but eight was Cardinal and Cardinal survived. When she revives two, four, and six, they will revive here on the max line. And then it doesn't matter that seven's in the bonus turn meter because as soon as five goes and kills everybody, Cardinal then revives everybody, let's say. I guess it would have to be like this. Cardinal revives everybody. Now they're going to go, even if somebody else is in the turn, bonus turn meter. It doesn't matter. Okay. The visuals didn't quite work there, but you get the idea. If you hit max, max is max. You, there's, no, there's no pushing past max. So everybody who hit max just goes in order of how, you know, who hit max first. And if they all hit max at the same time, it's who's fast. So a 200 speed would go before 150, who would go before 100. Okay. So that is the basics of turn meter mechanics. There's a lot more to it. There's a whole bunch of like big papers written about the turn meter. Um, but the basic idea is that at the end of your turn, you go back to the beginning of the line and then everybody steps forward in line. Okay. And that is the normal progression. The only way to exceed that is to go ahead and get pushed with a turn meter pusher. You can also decrease the turn meter of the enemy. That would help you to, you know, move ahead of them in line. Um, but that's not going to engage the bonus turn meter. That's just pushing them backwards. The only other thing that you need to know about this is that you get a, if you get a speed buff, a speed buff just means that when you take your step forward, you go further than you would otherwise. That's what that means. Okay. So if you get a 30% speed buff, you're going to advance 30% faster than you would if you were walking without the speed buff but it does not affect the bonus turn meter. So no matter how fast you are, you can't get into the bonus turn meter. You can just get to the front of the line and then wait there while all the turn meter pushers pass you. Okay. All right. Now, why does this all matter? Why does this all matter? So the first place this is going to probably matter for you is in the arena. The first thing you're going to want to learn about speed tuning is how to speed tune a good arena team. And you can do this in the first few days of a new account, maybe the first week of a new account. And it's going to continue to be the skill that you need to master in order to build good team compositions for a whole bunch of other fights outside of arena, whether it's Demon Lord Clan boss, or uh, maybe it's some of the special dungeons, or it's Doom Tower bosses. Um, you're going to need to speed tune a lot of different teams. And speed tuning can be relatively simple or it can be relatively complex. So basically, the idea behind speed tuning is simple. Get your team built at speeds where they take turns in the optimal order. And I'll give you a really simple example that you can use yourself in early arena. So I'm going to go here in the early arena, the classic arena, and I'm just going to go ahead and it doesn't matter what fight I jump into. I'm going to go ahead and pull up some teams. So these are saved teams. You can use this yourself to save different teams. Um, and the top one here, new team number two, this is a very, very early speed tune for Arena. Now, this might actually be so weak that people won't even build it anymore. It's not awful in concept. It's good in concept, but I want to take you through this. So the first champion here is Spirit Host. Now, Spirit Host has a speed aura. And so she gives um, that aura to everybody on the team. So everybody is going to move a little faster. That's generally good in arena. You probably want to go first in arena, especially early on. Later on, you'll find that go second teams are very powerful. And there are a lot of champions who want to, or a lot of players who want to go second. That is a more difficult team to build, especially early in the game. But if you get a really good defensive champion or champions that have good passives that can make your team very survivable, that can be a different option. But for now, we're going to focus on go first teams. So basically, we want to use our speed to go before our opponent. Now, in this particular case, we have a speed aura, and then Spirit Host also 
has an increased attack buff. Increased attack is going to increase our damage of our entire team. If you've watched my previous videos, you know why that buff is important. Um, the second champion here is um, War Maiden. War Maiden is going to hit everybody on the enemy team. She'll do damage based on attack, which is why you want Spirit Host to go first. Right. By the way, they don't have to go in this order. Like you can build your team out of order. Uh, they just go in order of speed, not in order of location. But I have put them in order of speed. So Spirit Host is the fastest, then War Maiden is second, and and then these two are my my third and fourth fastest. So. War Maiden is going to drop defense of the enemy, but she also does damage based on attack, so she's going to benefit from the increased attack that Spirit Host gives. That's why we want her to go second. Now, Athel is my big nuker. Okay, so she's going to go ahead. She has the increased attack from Spirit Host. She has the drop defense on the enemies now, so she's going to use her big AoE nuke, which is going to hit as hard as possible because of those buffs and debuffs. And then here I have another champion. It doesn't really matter. This is Soulbound Bowyer. It doesn't matter what champion I have here. This is just a cleanup hitter. Basically, Athel has killed hopefully most of the enemy. And then my second nuker is just cleaning up anybody who's uh, not dead. You could also have a support champion here. You could do a lot of different spots, you know, things with this fourth spot. It doesn't have to be a second nuker, but most likely early in the game, it's going to be your second nuker. Currently, as we speak, the free login reward champion is Artak. You might have Artak in this spot even though he's not a great arena nuker he's going to be a powerful champion that you've probably built and so he might be level 60 and you might have him in this spot okay now at 30 days you get high katoon and so you might be rebuilding your arena team as you progress in arena and this could be your second build so what you can see is if we look at the first build we have replaced spirit host with high katoon and we have replaced our fourth champion with another champion here who we'll get to in just a moment. But we still have our War Maiden and our starter champion as our nuker. So High Katoon is an awesome champion. And when you get High Katoon, you're gonna wanna build her to at least five stars, possibly six stars. She has a good speed aura in all battles of 19%. So that's a bit better aura than Spirit Host who has 10% 10 speed aura. So the whole team is moving faster. In addition, she has a turn meter boost and she has a speed buff on that turn meter boost. So the same skill will move your turn meter forwards and give everybody a speed buff. Okay, so that makes her very good as your fastest champion in arena. You put her there and you let her speed everybody else up. Now, when I got rid of Spirit Host, I lost my increase attack. So I want to replace her with another increase attack champion, but I want that champion to maybe be even better than Spirit Host. So I could still have Spirit Host in this spot. She would be my second fastest champion and the same rules would apply as in the previous team. But instead, I've put Old Hermit Jorg here. Now, Old Hermit Jorg has a, an increased attack, but on that increased attack, he also increases turn meter by 20%. So now I have an increased turn meter on my first champion. I have an increased turn meter on my second champion, which means that my third and fourth champion are really being pushed forward, and so my whole team is more likely to go before the enemy team. I get the drop defense and the nuke just like before. Hopefully by this point, 30 days in, my Athel is hitting much harder than she was previously, so I don't need a cleanup secondary nuker. I can just go with the single nuker, and she's actually going to do the job just fine by herself. By the way, just in case I get into trouble here, Old Hermit Jorg does have a revive. He can revive two allies. So potentially, if it does go past the first turn, I have a secondary option, like a plan B can come into effect and uh, Old Hermit Jorg can keep me going. This speed tune concept continues all the way through until Platinum Arena, basically. It never really changes that much. And you can see here, I've got another potential team. Once you get Arbiter from your Arbiter missions, She's going to be the best speed lead you could ever have in the game. There are some champions. There's at least one champion I know that have a faster speed aura, but she has a 30% arena speed aura, which is the second highest in the game. She also has a turn meter fill of 30%, and she has an increased attack on that turn meter fill. So she is doing the same exact job that Gorgorab is doing. She's just doing it better. Then we have Deacon Armstrong. You may get Deacon Armstrong actually pretty early, and he's a great champion that you can have in Arena. 
he has a turn meter fill and then he gets a free turn and he can do a drop defense so you've got your increase attack and a turn meter fill and then you've got your drop defense and a turn meter fill and by the way his turn meter fill will also reduce the turn meter of the enemy so you can potentially get two advantages there although that does require accuracy he is a debuffer so you're going to want to build him with accuracy now i have Sathalia, who has replaced madam saris she is a buff stripper as well. I could keep Madam Saris in this role. Madam Saris is still very good here. I just put Sethalia because as you progress, you might want to use um, legendary champions for other things. So you might have a Sethalia built. And you can see my Madam Saris is only level 50 because once I got Sethalia, I decided to build her to 60 instead of Madam Saris. And then here we've got an endgame nuker in Trunda, who is one of the biggest, hardest hitters in the game. You can see I do not have her quite fully built yet. I just got her not too long ago. Um, but so she is extremely hard hitting. And this team right here is the exact same speed tune, the exact same concept as this first starter team. So you never really get away from the idea that as long as you go in the correct order and you build your, your speed tune so that you get your buffs first, then you put out your debuffs and then you hit with your nukers, that's really the order that you want to go in. And that stays true whether you are in bronze one or gold five or plat. Okay, so that is how speed tuning works in the arena. I'm also going to just briefly show you the second most important place or the second, it's not the most important, it's probably the most important place, but the second other really important place that you're going to want to speed tune early on in your account is in the Demon Lord clan boss. So Demon Lord clan boss has the best rewards in the game. And you can do this every day. And obviously you can get shards. If as you progress up through the difficulty levels, you can get void shards, you can get sacred shards, you can get epic tomes and legendary skill tomes. So you can really get the best rewards in the game from clan boss. So you're gonna want to start on your journey right away. Now, clan boss is going to be multiple turns. So it's not like arena where you're trying to win in the first turn. You want to extend this fight as long as possible. You want to go 20 turns, 40 turns, 80 turns, 100 turns. And in order to do that, you're going to need to speed tune a team so that the skills come out in the right order, not just for one turn, but every single turn. Now, there are a bunch of different ways to do that, but your best tool is going to be Deadwood Jedi. Dot com. So Deadwood Jedi is a content creator. Uh, this is deadwoodjedi.com. I will put the link to this website in the description below. This is an extremely valuable tool here that Deadwood and his uh, community have created. So go ahead and sign up for Deadwood's account. It's totally free. He's not going to bother you with any ads or anything, um, but you do need to sign up to get access to the calculator. So when you come here, the thing you are going to want to do is probably look at the speed tune list. OK, now you can make teams that are unkillable. They literally cannot die. And that's for 50 turns at 50 turns. The clan boss will ignore unkillable buffs and will block revives and stuff and will just wipe your team out. But 50 turns is a lot of turns. So this may be the place that you want to start. You can go with an unkillable speed tune. Now, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to click on the speed tune list right here. And it gives me a whole list of speed tunes. And then I'm going to go to filters and I'm going to choose an unkillable team. And I want the difficulty to be easy. That's all I'm going to click. I don't worry about any anything else. And one of the reasons is I don't really know what my clan boss team is yet. For, at the very beginning, you're probably just putting in your arena team and you're throwing in a fifth champion. You're just going with whatever your strongest champions are. But probably starting in maybe month two or month three, you're going to start looking for clan boss champions that you can build into a speed tune so what i would say is here's a good one these are all easy um i'm gonna look at budget myth air let's try that one okay and so this has a pre-built speed tune for you and you can see there are four required champions and then there's a fifth spot for dps and there might be some notes here about what dps are most effective but basically, if you can build these champions, you do need two pain keepers, which is a pain keepers avoid rare. 
Uh, Demitha is a void epic and Eris is just a regular rare. So it's not that hard to collect these champions. Um, but if you see these champions, you might say, oh, I can start to build this speed tune. Now down here, it's the calculator links. You're gonna go ahead and click on the calculator link for the difficulty that you want to do. So let's say we're up to Nightmare, we're trying to get to Nightmare. Now, don't be afraid. This screen is a little bit hairy to look at first time. You're like, oh my gosh, there's a lot going on. There are a lot of colors or a lot of symbols. I can't. Basically, if you look at it on the left-hand side, in this left-hand column, is all of the champions. They are pre-programmed in here. You don't have to put them in, but if you want to change one, you can. So let's say we don't have Ninja as our DPS, but instead as our DPS, we just want to put in the starter champion, Kale. Okay. Um, now, out here in the big part of the screen with all the colors, those bars are the same color as the champion's banners here. And so that color, like the yellow color is Demitha. You can see Demitha is yellow down here on the left. She's the fourth champion down. And then here, whenever you see the yellow bar with the Mythos name, that's where she's going in the turn. Where you see clan boss at the bottom with the black bar, that's the clan boss's turn. So in this first turn, everybody is going before the clan boss goes. Okay. As far as these symbols, those are the buffs that are going to be up or coming off of these champions. We're less worried about that. And then the letters here are the skills that they're doing. Are they doing their A1, A2, A3 on this particular turn? So. All you have to do is match this build, and what will happen is you will get this turn order. And as you can see, what happens at the, it looks like it starts down here on turn six. Demitha puts up her A3 at the end of the turn order. Her A3 is an unkillable buff. I'm sorry, it's not an unkillable buff, it's a block damage buff. And that means the whole team will get block damage, and then the clan boss will hit everybody, and they won't take any damage. And then in the next turn, Demitha at the end of the turn puts up her A3 and everybody gets hit. And everybody has block damage and nobody t dies. And then over here, same thing. At the end of the th next round, Demitha puts up her A3, which is her block damage. And the clan boss tries to stun somebody and that person takes no damage. Now the stun can go through, but the great thing here is Eris at the, I forget if it's Eris or somebody, um, Eris put up, nope, I think there's a cleanse here. There must be a cleanse here somewhere. Um, I don't know where exactly it is. I can't see it out there. But so somebody is going to cleanse that stun or block that stun. Um, or maybe even in this particular case, maybe that person gets stunned and that's part of the tune. That can also happen. You can just build the stun into the, the rotation. But the goal here is to make the whole team not take damage whenever the clan boss attacks. And that's exactly what this build does. Now, you need these particular speeds. You can maybe change the speeds a little bit. So for instance, if I speed up Kale, one speed, nothing changes. But if I keep speeding him up, you can see at 238, all of a sudden, the tune changed. Now that might not be enough to knock it out of a line, like out of tune. You can see Demitha still going every single turn at the end with her A3. But now the turn order is a little bit different. If I kept speeding him up, eventually he throws it out of tune. So it looks like you can make him very fast and it doesn't throw it out of, out of tune for a while. Okay, now all of a sudden it's out of tune. So 266, Kale has thrown this out of tune. But, you know, you can run him pretty fast, it looks like. Anyway, that is a clan boss speed tune. I would say you want to try to do a little research on the speed tune list and kind of look for champions that you might collect, might even already be in your inventory that are part of these unkillable teams. So for instance, I could look at this Man Naya and you're like, okay, so these are different champions, Man Eater, God Seeker, Aniri, and White Triad uh, Naya. So if you have these three champions, you can build a different tune. And again, you go down here and you just open up the speed tune and the speed tune is already built for you and again these two spots are dps at the bottom here and you can swap in whatever champions you have that you want to be the dps and the tune will still work as long as you're on those speed so that is how you speed tune uh, a clan boss team again deadwoodjedi.com great great 
website to come and work on your clan boss speed tuning. I'll quick show you my speed tune here. So uh, let's see, I've already done that one today. But you can see these are my champions. Actually, that's not my normal speed tune. This is my normal speed tune. It doesn't matter. But so these champions are designed to be an unkillable team. Helicath has an unkillable buff. I, I'm sorry, he has a block damage buff just like Demitha does. And so he works kind of like Demitha. But in this particular case, his cooldown is a little bit longer than Demitha's. It's four turns instead of three. So I need Renegade here to come in and, um, and to give him his cooldown back. So she basically lowers his cooldown and then he can just keep that buff up for longer. And so this allows me to get, let's see, on Ultra Nightmare, I had to use my alternate speed tune because it's Spirit Affinity. So my normal speed tune doesn't work on every affinity, but I have two tunes. But this one actually got me 113 million on one key. Prior to speed tuning, I was getting three turn, uh, three key Ultra Nightmare. I took the same exact champions, basically, with one, one substitution. I speed tuned them. That day, I went from roughly like, I want to say 25 million a key to 110, 120 million a key. So that's how valuable a speed tune can be for a clan boss. And that means every day I clear Ultra Nightmare, Nightmare, Brutal, and Hard. I can one key all four of the top highest difficulties and get the maximum number of chests. So that is how valuable speed tuning is. I hope you understand speed tuning a little bit more now. I hope you understand turn meter a little bit more now. Um, definitely visit Deadwood Jedi's website. You can also look, there are other speed tuning tools for other types of fights. So whether you're in the arena, I think there's a speed tuning calculator out there for Iron Twins, which is uh, one of the harder dungeons in the game. So if you're looking for help here, you can speed tune teams for this. Um, I think there are also speed tunes out there for Sand Devil's Necropolis. Um, so speed tuning is just something that you're going to continue to use as long as you play Rage Shadow Legends. You can ignore it if you want. You can ignore speed tuning and still enjoy the game, absolutely. But if you want to get the most out of your champions, speed tuning is definitely the way to go. And the earlier you master it, the better off you're going to be. Thanks for hanging out. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about speed, speed tuning, or turn meter mechanics. Um, and hopefully, you know, this will at least get you started on that journey to understanding those concepts. Uh, but thanks for hanging out. I've been Cole Red, and I will see you in another video soon.